It's that time of year again, friends. You know what time? Oh yeah, it's Top 5 Fridays. You know, if I had a nickel for every time I heard the word unprecedented in 2020, I think that I'd probably be able to finance a brand new car. That said, no hype. This is an unprecedented year for our top five best and worst blasters. Because for the first time ever uh, in the history of me doing these and being in the hobby, both lists are monopolized by a single company. It's just kind of unreal. And that's with me being as objective as I possibly can be. I'll tell you one thing that isn't 100% objective though, it's our number five pick. All right guys, so our number five pick isn't all Fortnite blasters and that's gonna come up later on in the video. My number five pick is specifically this Fortnite blaster because at 60 United States dollars, I just expected more. This blaster, kind of stinks. It also just is like a fun callback to my review and still lingering to this day, literally stinks. So that's a weird thing to be mad about. And like, admittedly, if I played with it outside more than just, you know, doing the review and plinking with the dogs, like it would probably air out over time. But it seems like it's Hasbro has tried and then had some major, major issues <coughs> moving their manufacturing over to India. Everything that comes out of those factories like has this really weird odor to it. And for premium video game tie-in products that cost 60 United States dollars, and don't get me wrong, you pay for a premium on all of them. Uh, it's just kind of surreal. The Overwatch blasters, despite my gripes, were at least constructed well and didn't smell bad. Uh, this guy literally stinks and figuratively stinks. The performance is low, and while if a cartoon grenade launcher was your speed and you were willing to shell out, you know, $10 a shot for it, I'm sure that you were thrilled, and I understand that this one's gonna be the one on the list that gets me a little bit of hate. Uh, I was not a big fan personally of the grenade launcher. It did not impress me. Not only did all of my other Fortnite blasters have at least some semblance of performance, they also didn't seem to have quite the odor that this one did, and they didn't hurt my wallet quite as much. The reason that this one is still in the box is because I am currently debating taking it back to Target. Which to be clear, is something that I haven't done with a formal product that I've purchased with my own money in like years. I, uh, I am a big fan of tinkering with the things that I don't like, taking them apart, trying to fix them, or finding them another home. But because this smells so bad, I wouldn't be comfortable donating it anywhere. And because I don't personally wanna mess with it or enjoy playing with it, I legitimately don't know what else to do with it and it takes up so much space that it's like just really an eyesore in my storage room. I don't know, that window's closing pretty soon, but in a world where everybody's trying to figure out what they're gonna do for holiday presents this year, a Target gift card goes a long way. Moving on. But Drac, you love the long shot. Exactly, and that's why this is our number four pick. It's because I love the long shot and what the long shot means, not just for like hobbyists, not just for modders, not just for enthusiasts, but like for legitimately people who just grew up with Nerf blasters and really enjoy playing with them. This is a flagrant insult. It's like this sneaky remix is shameful to the degree that it borders on the imbecilic. It is unbelievable to me that this made its way through production and onto store shelves. It costs more than the original long shot by more than an inflation margin. And it takes away literally one of the coolest parts. The sole of the long shot got ripped out, bend, and replaced with a smaller plunger with worse performance. It's like very, very upsetting. Now it's also sneaky though, in that if you're not like a diehard enthusiast of foam flinging or the Nerf brand, you see this and you think that it's a throwback to something really, really cool. This is number four on the list because while I'm sure that most of the younger foam flinging audience is susceptible to it, I can think of nothing that the millennials in my audience are more sick and tired of than people taking corporate lies and nonsense, packaging it up in nostalgia pills, and shoving it down our consumerist throats. I'm not here for it. I know nobody else is here for it. Coops literally didn't work in his review. This is a tragedy. Number three. Number three is short and sweet, literally. It's, and while I don't have one to show you or talk to you about, I've seen enough reviews and gotten some uh, secondhand knowledge from very close friends of mine that this thing is well, kind of poppy and cute, kind of a result of a much more prevalent, larger symptom that we're gonna get into with our number two and number one picks, which is this year and what I can only assume is just a massive corporate rollout over at the mothership to reduce 
the cost of producing pretty much everything and then increase profits literally wherever they can scrape them by. And as familiar as we are with it in Nerf, we see it all the time over at Wizards of the Coast. We see it in the Transformers offerings this year. I'm sure that the action figure enthusiasts have things to add or detract from my arguments, et cetera, et cetera, and so forth. And I understand. I understand that you lost major properties over in movies uh, with like Star Wars and Marvel. And I get it. But like this has been a down year for everybody. And gutting the soul out of some of your most popular franchises to try and keep your share price afloat is not the way to recover in the coming years. I think that people are going to remember in a serious way that you took your literal cheapest blaster and took the spring out of it and made it exponentially worse by removing its ability to store potential energy and fire a consistent shot to save a buck? Come on. Come on. You got to be better than that. The uppercut is just an unbelievable product to me. And while it might have a little bit of pop, it certainly has no punch. Our number two on the top five worst blasters of 2020 is the Shockwave. And I want to be abundantly clear here. I could have made this list with entirely Elite 2.0 blasters. And in fact, I did make that list. I thought that it would be an interesting video, but it would be redundant and I can get most of my thoughts out of the way here. Elite 2.0 is neither Elite nor is it 2.0, which means that it's a lie from the beginning to the end. And that's to say that like Elite is just the kind of engineering iteration of the original Instrike line. Instrike is what kind of started the Nerf Renaissance. Elite made the Nerf Renaissance better, and Elite 2.0 neutered it. It took a lot of the features and the polish out of the line. And while certainly some remnants of the father exist in the sun, I mean, these are just shameful. There's very, very low deco. There's very little going into the actual like industrial design, the beautification of these products. And in the case of the Shockwave in particular, and the reason that I chose this one, it was stripped of some of its best features. How are you going to charge the same amount as its regular Nerf Elite counterpart and then remove the slam fire? The best thing about a drum gun? Like, what are you thinking over there? Low capacity, low effort. Elite 2.0. The only low thing about it that somebody's happy about is the shareholders, which are carefully considering its low build of materials, which is to say it no longer has formal rail attachment points. Its lack of features is obviously a cost saving on molds design uh, in an attempt to reduce the number of pieces necessary to make this. And then, of course, we are tinkers. All of these things are forgivable, except in an attempt to hide their shame, they solvent welded all of the Elite 2.0 blasters together in the hopes that nobody would crack them open and figure out how dirty they'd been done. I don't have anything else to say about it. It's just really, really sad when a blaster brand is beating its chest about how many units they sell, and the blasters from the same brand that you can pick up at a Goodwill for like pennies on the dollar are literally better than the ones that come brand new from the retailers. The objective of iterative design is to get better as time goes along and provide more to your loyal fans. Certainly not less. And I mean, at the end of the day, somebody has to take a stand and say that we are people and not pocketbooks. This is insane, guys. Elite 2.0, no thank you. Let's move on to number one. Can you guess? Not all that glitters is gold. And of course, not all that's gold, glitters, eh? So this Trauma Hawk is obviously the Ultra 3. And again, just like the Elite 2.0 line, it would have been easy. Um, not pleasant, but easy to fill an entire top five worst blasters list with Ultra. In fact, it would look a lot like making the top five Nerf Ultra blasters list. <laughs> I hope that I'm qualified to say this, but this is like the Atlanta Falcons of blaster lines. There isn't a single winner in this roster. It's pretty unbelievable. So. Uh, the reason that I chose the Ultra 3, and again, like, and I've said this ad nauseum, I don't want to sound like a broken record here. The Ultra line is a deliberate attempt to take bad engineering, cover it up with marketing spend, shove Guy Fieri and people I've otherwise never heard of down our throats, and try and convince us that we should buy into an ammo type that's not only like flagrantly bad, but also so fragile to the point that you're spending five times as much on this ammo as you would be on half decent ammo and 20 times as much as you would be on the best ammo. <laughs> and at the end of the day, it's gonna break if it hits anything or goes through flywheels wonky or goes through flywheels correctly. It's just an inherently fragile, low performance ammo that Hasbro can't stop telling us in every ad they make how wonderful and revolutionary it is. Polypropylene was certainly not the answer and neither is the Ultraline. And it's just terrible that when like other companies have clearly embraced that like 
Halflinks seem to be the future of performance and the hobby and the genre that Hasbro's like, we'd rather have proprietary patentable things that we can force people to buy reload packs at a thousand and something odd margin. Like, and that's sort of the overall tune. Um, in 2020, Hasbro saw a lot of people hurting and decided that it was time to make a buck. And if you guys will forgive me from spooling up my soapbox again, I mean, that's the overall theme. I chose the Ultra 3 because it like physically injured me. It's such a classic case of bad design. Putting a brick on a stick and calling it a shotgun is unbelievable. But to have a pump grip that crunches you when your fingers are in safety and hurts your knuckles if you pump a little bit further than its stroke length there, it's just unacceptable, like it's an inherently flawed product. And while lazy design and finger pinching certainly isn't something that they're gonna take to like a safety regulations board, at the end of the day, the whole thing kind of boils down to Hasbro had one tune in 2020, which was how do we make as much money off of our fans delivering them subpar products as we possibly can? And the only answer that Hasbro seems capable of coming up with is how do we, you know, take as much money from our loyal fans as we possibly can while putting in minimal effort and lots of marketing spend? And it's just kind of a sick and confusing machine once you've seen behind the panel and understand how the sauce is made. And the terrible and kind of funny joke that Hasbro seems to have come up with to answer that problem is to lay just the marketing spend on as thick as they possibly can and pick off the lowest common denominator of consumer. That's painful. Like, I don't know how else to phrase that. I don't know how to phrase it more politely. Like, it's an insult in a lot of ways. And I wish that there was a more polite or more delicate way to put that or parse that, but there really just isn't at this point. It's flagrant to the point that I think that somebody has to mention it. I've been as complete and sincere as I can be in all of my reviews of all of their offerings this year, and I'm just over here really disappointed. If you had told me at any point in my nerfing career that the top five blasters on the bottom of the barrel would be entire lines, genres, and entirely Hasbro, I would never have believed it, but that's where we are. And so I just want to take this opportunity because I know exactly where this video winds up over in Pawtucket to say that like you guys can do better. You owe it to your fans. You owe it to your employees. Like everybody deserves better. And it's not actually that much harder to do that much better. All you have to do is take a step back from the board and refocus on your core competencies. You guys are really good at making high quality blasters when you're willing to put the effort in. In conclusion, I can't in good faith recommend any of the blasters on this list. There will be no buy links at the bottom of this one. I think that truly the only language that is capable of being understood at this point is, you know, the bottom line. And so by not purchasing these things, we're really kind of making our position clear that we would like better products or even novel products in some way, shape, or fashion. And I can only hope that Hyper delivers on the false promises that we've received this year in the coming year. Um, that's pretty much it. This was a very painful video to make. This was very difficult to make. It feels like I'm wailing on a blaster brand that like I truly unequivocally and completely love and have devoted, by the way, tireless years of my life with zero cents received to the promotion and enhancement of uh, in a variety of different forms and fashions. So I hope that you guys are looking forward to our top five blaster list. We'll catch you this same time next week, top five Fridays. And all I can say is, there's a new sheriff in town. Much love, blast on, drag out. <laughs> <laughs>